Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This is the third video I have filmed today, and like I am close to falling asleep. <laughs> We've gotta keep the energy up. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today we are gonna be talking about. I always say that, don't I? Today. Today, I am so annoying. I'm so sorry. I never found you funny. I never found you entertaining. I never found you smart. I just found you annoying. So we're gonna be chatting about all of my favorite YA books ever. So I saw Gabby doing this the other day and I just thought that looks like fun. I wanna do it too. Because there's some here I haven't spoken about in a long time. So if you're new to my channel, you probably don't know how much I like them. So this is a definitive list for you to come back to. But before we get into the video, I actually wanna take a moment to tell you guys all about the sponsor for today's video, which is Basmo. So I've been speaking about Basmo quite a bit lately and how much I've been enjoying using it. But one part of it that I wanna tell you about specifically is the reading goals and reading statistics section of the app. So something I find really useful with Basmo is that you can set a goal for how many minutes per day you wanna read. And it's kind of like a motivation to get yourself to pick up a book every day and read even if it's only a 10 minute goal seeing that in the app seeing a goal and seeing you like fulfilling that goal I think is a uh, really really satisfying and motivating you can also set a goal for how many books you want to read a year and it will like track that for you and tell you how many books you need to read per week from now on in order to reach your goal when you do reading sessions it tracks how many minutes you read I am currently in the uh, top 10% of readers, if I do say so myself. Not that I'm bragging or anything. <laughs> but it's true! I'm the best one! All of you in the top 1% better watch out because I am coming for you. You can see bar charts and graphs on how much you're reading per day so you can compare stuff and I just think it's really uh, motivating and helpful to see this kind of stuff visually. So I will link Basmo down below. You should definitely go check them out and yeah. I really recommend it. Okay, when Gabby did this video, she did it by genre and I am going to copy that. <laughs> So we're gonna start with contemporary. I feel like contemporary is one of my most read YA genres. Uh, first of all, like I'm gonna be basic for a second and say The Hate You Give and On The Come Up by Angie Thomas are two of my favorites. Angie Thomas, a queen, a legend. She's like a, the queen of YA. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now, come on now. I'm sure you know by now, but The Hate You Give is about a girl who uh, witnesses her friend being murdered by the police. And On The Come Up is about this young girl who wants to be a rap star. One thing, if I'm to give you one, one little tidbit, of, you know, a little nugget of information about why I love these books. I feel like Angie Thomas does a whole cast very well. Sometimes with YA, contemporary, I find it's only really the protagonist who is fleshed out, but every single character, even if they only have a line on the page in Angie Thomas's books, are so vivid, you know, have so much thought behind them. I, feel, I really feel like there's a lot of care behind every single character in her books. So that's really something that stands out that, you know, isn't just me saying, oh, the book's great, go read it. Next, I would recommend Alice Oseman's book. So, Rojo Silence is a top favourite. It is an iconic book. I would really recommend the audiobook. It's about this girl who's, like, in her last year of school and she really loves this uh, podcast and she starts, like, designing the art for the podcast and it's, like, this story of friendship. Really, really great. And I also really like Loveless by Alice Oseman and Nick and Charlie by Alice Oseman. This is a little novella about Nick and Charlie who we'll speak about a little bit later on. I'll hold off talking about Nick and Charlie for now. You naughty, naughty. You teasing me, you naughty, naughty. <laughs> But Loveless is about this girl who has never been in love, never been kissed, and she's going to university, which I really like. I feel like not enough YA is at university, because I still think, I still feel like it can be YA when you're at uni. I don't think you turn 18 and like, that's immediately like, okay, we can never write YA about them. YA is not an age, it's a state of mind. Delusion. <laughs> Convince yourself. So she, and she kind of discovers what asexuality is and starts to figure out whether that applies to her. And I'll mention, this probably should go in a later category, but I'll just mention it quickly. Please Ignore Vera Dietz by A.S. King. This is a story of this girl whose best friend has recently passed away and she thinks maybe she can talk to him still. So it's not really a contemporary, this should be in a different category. 
<laughs> but I really, really loved this. I think um, it was a great look at grief and A.S. King is just one of my favorite writers. So I listened to the audiobook of this and I'd really recommend it. Next, I love all of Elizabeth Acevedo's books. So With the Fire on High, Clap When You Land and The Poet X. These two are told in verse. So they're kind of written as poetry. This one is about this um, girl who likes to kind of do spoken word but has to keep it a secret. This one, Clap When You Land, is about uh, two girls who have the same father and he dies going to visit one of them and they didn't know that each other existed before and then they kind of learn about each other's existence through their father's death. And With the Far and High is told more traditionally and it's about this girl who is a young mother and she loves to cook and it's about her kind of figuring out how to live the life that she, you know, wants to live herself whilst also providing for her daughter and being a great mum. These books are so touching, like they're so beautifully written and emotional and I think are some of the, the most like emotional YA books I've ever read. With the Far and High is definitely my favourite. I, I really liked how we got to spend more time with the characters in this but all of Elizabeth Avedo's books have this beautiful lyricism to them it's some of the most beautiful writing I've ever read yeah I think like even if I think if you've never read in verse before I would definitely recommend giving it a go link to that I'd also really recommend The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta this is a recent read this is also told in verse it's about Michael from literally when he's born almost to when he's uh, like 18-ish at university discovering drag. It's about the story of his life and him being gay and black and the struggles that he faces being both of those things. Like oh my god, like <laughs> I cannot speak highly enough of Dean Atter's writing. Jeez. <laughs> Like genuinely, I think one of the best writers I've ever read, the way that, I've said this so many times before, but the way that he uses language and can like use such a few words to say so much is so beautiful. I feel like I need to reread this again soon because it doesn't take long. It's only like a couple hours because it is told in verse. Then an old favourite that I think about quite a bit is Watch Us Rise by Renee Watson and Ellen Hagen. This is about these two girls who run this feminist club at their school and it's about them figuring out ways in which their feminism is flawed and how they need to improve it, learning about themselves and their friendship. And I just thought it was really well written. And more than anything, I feel like in this one, the girls really read like 16 like I feel like okay, often I read YA and either 16 year olds are really like really aged down or they're aged up and I feel like this was a real you know realistic look at what it's like to be 16. Another favourite is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. This is a sapphic romance and it's about this girl who loses her scholarship I think or like something goes wrong and she can't afford to go to university so she has to try out for prom queen because in like her middle of nowhere town there's a really big money prize for being prom queen and when she is kind of like going to like the classes and stuff to try out to be prom queen she meets this other girl and they start to fall in love it's a really nice YA romance. I listened to the audiobook for this as well and really enjoyed that. Oh, and another audiobook, quick mention to Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown. This is like a semi-autobiographical story. Major, major trigger warnings for this. Like almost anything you can imagine there being a trigger warning for, there is a trigger warning for. Sexual assault, sexual assault of a child, death, racism, um, so many different things. There's so many different trigger warnings for this. It was so interestingly told. It jumps back and forth in time. Even in the middle of sentence, it will switch scene. And it was really emotional. I almost cried when reading it. And Echo Brown narrates the audiobook. Um, so that is a great audiobook as well. And then finally for contemporary, another new favourite is Fat Chance Charlie Vega by Crystal Maldonado. This is about Charlie Vega, who has always been compared to her best friend and kind of boys use her to get to her best friend. And, um, she is fat and it's about her learning to you know appreciate her body and wrestle with like the fat phobia in society and it's about a cute little romance she has with a guy that she works with okay oh I've put these all in front of the graphic novels so let's like scooch over a second shall we my number one favorite graphic novel series is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman this features Nick and Charlie um, as they meet and fall in love it's the cutest thing in the world if you haven't read this you've got to go read them it won't take you long and it's literally the best graphic novel ever. Is that true? 
It's very true. I love them so much. I would die for Nick and Charlie. I would defend them to the death. No one can touch them. No one can hurt them because I love them so much. Another favourite is The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This is kind of like almost like an historical kind of vibe where this prince is being made to look for a bride but no one knows that he actually likes to dress up in gowns and it's about um, the friendship between him and his dressmaker as she like holds his secret and it was just a really really cute gra graphic novel. You're know, looking at gender expectation and kind of celebrating breaking out of that boundary. And then another really cute romance is Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Gunusho. This is about two boys who meet at one of their parents' uh, bakeries and it's just about their like romance. Oh! He fills my heart with warmth. And it's all told Hang on, I'll show you, in these blue tones. And I really, really liked that. I really like when graphic novels are monochromatic in this way. I think it's so beautiful. Let's do fantasy next. So this is one I feel like blurs the line between young adult and adult, but I wanted to give it an honorable mention. I won't speak about it too much because it. You, a lot of you know it's like my favorite fantasy series ever. But The Bear and the Nightingale, The Girl in the Tower, and The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden, the Winter Night Trilogy. I love it. I love everything about it. We're following Vasya in old Russia as she discovers old magic and talking to the house spirits and exploring her own power and growing into her own person. It's the love of my life. <laughs> but I do feel like it blurs the boundary because here's the thing, Vasya is, is like, we've watched her be born in the first book and then she's probably like 18, 20? 16? I don't know what age she is in the last book. But it does have an adult tone to it in kind of, you know, the level of writing. I don't always feel like YA is determined by the age of the protagonist. So I mention it here because it is often categorised as YA, but in some ways I do view it as more adult. I think it kind of straddles the line between the two. Another one of my all-time favourite series is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Liang, also Girls of Storm and Shadow. I definitely prefer the first one a lot more, but I I'm hoping for amazing things from the last one. It comes out the end of this year, hopefully. So I'm hoping for majestic things from that one. But this is about Lei, who is a paper girl. Basically, these girls are made to force to sleep with their king. They have to live at the palace, and they there's about six of them, and they're, they're forced to sleep with him. And so it is about, like, sexual assault and sexual trauma, and all the girls exhibit in different ways, you know, their reactions to that. And I thought that was so well done. It's also a sapphic romance, and it's some of the most amazing, you know, YA fantasy world building I've ever read. It's one of my favourite worlds, one of my favourite fantasy worlds I've read um, in YA fantasy, and also some of my favourite characters. Honourable mention to... <laughs> you guys gonna drag me for this! Uh, you guys go drag me for this, huh? Okay. Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I know everyone obsessed, but I did give these 4.5 stars and 5 stars. I just think, you know, such amazing characters, such amazing world building, such amazing plot. Like, you can't overstate how amazing these are, and they are popular for a good reason. Some YA fantasy, I read it, like popular, popular YA fantasy, and I'm like... choices. We all make choices, but that was a choice. <laughs> this one I feel like is popular for good reason and very deserving of it. And I cried so fucking much at Cooking Them. I cried so much. Here's the thing I'm noticing with my YA fantasy is I often have one book in the series that's five stars and then the rest aren't, which is strange. So honorable mention to the Diviners. <laughs> The Diviners series, um, The Diviners, Lair of Dreams, Before the Devil Breaks You. I have not read the final one, which is King of Crows yet, but Lair of Dreams, the second one, is by far and away my favourite. I think it is the best, without a shadow of a doubt. I think it is amazing. In this whole series, it's set in like 1920s New York, and we have these kids who have these special abilities, and they're kind of like Scooby Gang vibes, fighting monsters. This one is set a lot in dreams, and I really enjoyed that. I thought our main characters, because we kind like switch up which of the group maybe have a focus in each book and I thought Ling and Henry who were kind of like the focus characters of this book are like the best like I love them I don't really love the other characters much but Ling and Henry have my heart and me and my gals we eat chicken nuggets together and then two quick mentions I only have one physically but the whole Wayward Children series by Shauna Maguire is about these kids who can like go into these portal worlds uh, that are perfect for them and it's only these short novellas and they are amazing like Shauna Maguire has some of the most like 
amazing, encapsulating, interesting, unique fantasy writing. And I cannot wait to just like read these forever. I do want them all physically, but a bitch is broke. So that will happen at some point that is not today. And then a quick mention to Strange to Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. The, the middle of this dragged a bit for me, but I loved it on the whole. We're following Laszlo Strange, who is obsessed with this mythical lost city of Weep. And so it turns out it's not lost or mythical and he gets to go there. Lainey Taylor's writing is so magical and whimsical. And the ending of this is the most soul destroying ending I've ever read in my life. And here's the thing, you kind of know it's coming. You kind of know it's coming because you've kind of been told it's coming, but you're in denial and you're not accepting that it's coming. And it's like one of the most horrible endings I've ever read. I definitely need to finish this series, read the second in the duology. Then for thriller and mystery, I only really have a few. I tend to prefer adult thriller and mystery. First is Sadie by Courtney Summers. I would 100% recommend the audiobook for this. It is so, so good. This is about a girl called Sadie whose sister, her sister has gone missing and um, she is trying to find her but Sadie also goes missing and it's told through her perspective at the time before she went missing and then this podcast guy trying to figure out what has happened and doing interviews with people. I don't want to think about the ending to this either. A lot of these have like crazy ass endings. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. If I pretend it didn't exist, it didn't exist. But I loved like the podcast element of this. I really want to read more books with like a podcasty element to them. They also have great um Audiobooks. <laughs> Girl, find the note. Find the note. And then quick mentions. We all know I love A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is like this girl doing this project trying to prove that this girl who went missing five years ago wasn't actually murdered by her boyfriend. This is again mixed media. So it's like told through interviews and like production logs and pictures and stuff like that. We all know this is like one of my favorite murder mystery YA series. I think it's absolutely amazing. I think it's hard to do a good YA murder mystery because it has to be toned down a certain amount and this just does it so well. Like it's it's perfect. And then honourable mention, sometimes I don't think this is YA. Again, it's kind of like ageless in my view because it's so perfect. The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter series by Theodora Goss. This is my favourite series of all time. Like genuinely my favourite series of all time. We are following the daughters and female versions of men from classic Victorian literature. So our stars are Mary Jekyll and Diana Hyde. We have Justine Frankenstein, who's the female Frankenstein. We have Catherine Morrow and Beatrice Rappuccini. And they um, are like trying to solve mysteries with Sherlock and Watson. And it's about them being this found family of women. Um, this is another one where I love the way it's told. Basically, I idea behind this is that Catherine is writing the book and the other girls will cut in like saying things like that's not how it happened or I don't say things like that and so it just adds this whole other character element to the story and then our final category we're almost there ladies and gentlemen don't give up on me now is what I would call weird books weird books. First we have You Must Not Miss by Katrina Leno. This is about this young girl who's been going through this really tough time. Her mother is struggling with alcohol addiction and her father isn't really in the picture anymore and so she writes about this place called Near which is perfect and one day she is dreamt Near up so well that it appears in the garage in her back garden and things start going not so perfect basically. Me trying to pretend this book wasn't going to shit when it was in fact going to shit. No, it was a mistake. Trigger warnings in this for sexual assault. I've always said that this book does such a good job of encapsulating anger. Anger after being abused or being put in a shitty situation. It doesn't shy away from that anger and I thought it did that so well. Next, another A.S. King is Dig by A.S. King. This is about these people in this really like small American town and it it kind of boils down to being about like white supremacy and ingrained racism and familial lines of privilege and racism in kind of you know like the south of America. Some of the characters in this are like called the freak or the shoveler like they're not given names for portions of the book and it's just told in this very strange way but it's such a clever book such a clever YA book. I would recommend this to everyone. Everyone who I have lent this to has loved it so so much and it's so unusual. I don't feel like there's anyone out there doing it like A.S. King is doing it. Then we have The Wicker King by Kay Ankrum. This is about two boys who have like this very close 
uh, like interdependent relationship with each other and one of them starts kind of like hallucinating or seeing things that aren't there and the other boy kind of decides that the way to help him is to like help him believe in what he's seeing even more. It's told in this format where chapters are often only a page or two and there's like pictures in this as well and like posters and mixtapes, CD mixtapes. This was such an interesting book. You'll fly through it, it'll only take you like 10 minutes to read. No, it'll take you like a couple hours but not very long at all. I thought that Jack and August, the two boys in this, were two of the most interesting characters I've ever read. They have a very interesting relationship. There's a lot in this book that is kind of inferred. I feel like and Crumb infers stuff really well and it's up to you to like pick up the pieces which I don't think is done enough in YA. I think YA sometimes, not like this is of course a generalisation, but it can simplify stuff right? So I feel like this um, K and Crumb kind of leaves you to pick up the pieces somewhat. Excuse me? I'm a genius. Look. Then we have Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This is about these girls who are at this boarding school and a kind of plague has overtaken them where they all get like these physical deformities. There's like this trio of girls who are very close and one of them goes missing and the other girls need to go follow. Weird book. Weird fucking book. Such a weird book. <laughs> the ending to this is very strange. The whole book is, this is one of the weirdest books I've ever read but I really, really enjoyed the experience of reading it. And finally, we have Watch Over Me by Nina Lacour. This is about this young girl who is aged out of the foster care system so she goes to stay and work at this house There's a lot of other foster kids and she kind of teaches there and she can see these ghosts Everyone can see these ghosts like floating around the field at night and it's seen as like a normal thing in this You really don't know who can who you can trust and again, this is very much like about a girl dealing with her manifestation of trauma like you must not miss but this one where that was anger this is much more quiet and sadness and melancholy and like that kind of quiet sadness that burrows down to the, the depth of someone and so I think these two are really great to like read in comparison with one another and they both do such a great job similar to like how I feel like Girls of Paper and Fire does a great job at, at showing how different girls can react differently to sexual assault and there's no one right reaction. This and You Must Not Miss both show girls reacting to trauma in different ways that are both equally valid. So there we have it. That is all of my favourite YA books. I hope I haven't missed out anything. I don't think I have. Again, there were some books I feel like blurred the lines between young adult and adult, but I think I got it all. Let me know if you read any of these, what you thought of them, if you liked them. If you've gotten to the end, comment a flower emoji for you must for you must not miss for watch over me. I hope that this video will be a great place for you guys to come back to whenever you need a YA recommendation and you know what I would recommend the most basically. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you very very soon in another video. Bye!